Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and I'm here to kind of play around with the same question with uh, several different types of readings to see how uh, those might, why you might choose one over the other and how they might look differently or similarly. So when in my geomancy class, um, I believe it was Elrond who um, said, who asked that question of like, when you, there's so many uh, different systems at our disposal like how do you go about knowing how to do though or which one to use and how to incorporate them and sort of that overwhelm of having so many different systems and one thing led to another that one might be interesting to do a video using the same question but uh, using different systems to answer the same question. So that is what I am going to do tonight. Now I'm gonna first ask a quick question. So more, a little bit closer to a yes and no question. Uh, so for example, a question such as, um, is it time for me to move jobs? Should I take this job? Uh, so these are more yes and no kinds of questions, right? Is it time for me to move on? Uh, these kinds of energies. So I'm going to go uh, with a work because work questions are often pretty precise what we're looking for um, and yes and no questions come up a lot am I going to find a new job uh, those types of questions here so I'm going to do more short readings such as three card tarot reading a nine card Lenormand a quick uh, just the shield part of the geomancy He's not going into uh, the houses or anything like that um, and um, I guess uh, I'll still pull three cards for, although to me three cards is more uh, an oracle than a three card tarot in some ways, but I'll just do three cards in oracle. Um, and then we'll do a, a larger, a larger example of that. So the question is, um, am I going to get a new job? Like how would we approach this question of am I going to get a new job? Is there a new job coming for me, right? Uh, and so I'm going to start with Geomancy because it's right here in front of me. And so why clear it off before I do it? So let me grab my dice are over there, but I'm going to go ahead and use these because they're right here. These are polyhedral dice. You use it in playing Dungeons and Dragons and other RPG games. Um, but one thing that's really wonderful about uh, them is that four out of the seven dice in a polyhedral set are platonic shapes for elements. So this is a shape of earth. This is the shape of fire. This is the shape of air. And this is the shape of water. And so with a polyhedral set, you can take the extra three out and have a wonderful geomancy dice casting. <laughs> so there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and cast a quick shield. I'm not going to go into anything in depth. I'm just going to do the shield chart for the question of, is there a job on the horizon? And again, this is not, the intention of this is not to teach how to do a particular style of reading, but just to, um, just to, um, <laughs> brain dead, brain dead, just to, do you see these look the same? Oh, I guess it is, Trying to see what would be the top. It looks like the bottom of the tails would be the bottom. So that would be a nine and that would be a six. I haven't used this set in a while. Okay, so I'm not going to teach you how to read Geomancy. I'm just going to do these, uh, each of these systems and how I would do it to answer this particular question. So fire, we have a two. Uh, air, we have a six. Uh, water, we have a nine. And uh, earth, we have a one. Okay, so fire we have a three, air we have an eight, water we have a ten, and earth we have a one. Okay. 
Air we have a th or fire we have a three. Air we have a seven. Water we have a sixteen. And earth we have a three. One more casting. Fire we have a three, and our fire just went out over here. I'll have to redo that. And air we have a two. That is an omen that you know there is not a job in sight. <laughs> one and one. So that's all the casting that happens with Geomancy. So now I'm going to just quickly do the chart. So we have two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two, two, one, two, 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 one, two, one, two, two, one, and all ones via. Now I'm going to quickly combine them. Two plus one is one, two plus two is Two, two plus one is one, two, one plus two, one plus one is two. One plus one is two, two plus one is one, two plus one is one, one plus one is two. Two plus two is two, two plus one is one, one plus one is two, one. One plus one is two, two plus one is one, two plus one is one, one plus one is two. Two plus one is one, one plus two is one, one plus one is two, and two. Two plus two is two, two, one, one. And then we're final, two plus one is one, two plus one is one, one plus two is uh, and uh. So here we have change, our via for lots of change happening. I'm gonna com quickly combine the self with the judgment. 2 plus 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So, again, I'm not going to do anything extra on this except for just get ourselves down to the judge. And so in this case, the question is, Do is there a job on the horizon? Like, is something coming? And I would say yes, because we do have the figure Via. Uh, via is about change and movement and shifts. If the person doesn't have a job right now, and the change or shift in emotion is going to be moving them towards having a uh, job moving forward. And so this actually most likely will happen relatively quickly. We do see success with Fortuna Minor. Um, it is a little bit swift and it's a little bit unstable, but it is successful. Um, so there's, pro I would, you know, again, because I'm not going into much, we're just doing one of those quick readings, right? I would say yes, change is coming. It may not be the job that you end up staying at forever and ever, but it's going to be a job that's going to get you going and it's going to get you quickly on your feet again. Again. So that's uh, that. So that's how I would take Geomancy and answer that question quickly in more of a quick reading. So let's take Lenormand to do the same question. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna include the question or the answer from Geomancy. I'm just gonna take it as if I just came to this straight out of Lenormand. And this is my story in color, Lenormand. I'll try to remember to tell you on each of the decks if the, not in the box. If I forget, I apologize. So in Lenormand, uh, I'm I'm a proponent of proximity, and so I don't just lay nine cards out. Again, I have a lot of videos on this, so I'm not here really to show you how to do this, but just show you what kind of how you might get similar or answers you know, quick answers or longer answers using, a, you know, different systems. So I would, you know, shuffle, 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 and then I find the significator, which for me for work is the anchor. One, two, three, four. I need four cards after, and I need one, two, three, four cards before. Okay, so that, these follow after, and these come before. Let me get these out of the way. Those are anything. 
So I always go to the upper corner again. I'm just looking for a quick answer here. I'm not looking to dive deep or anything like that. I'm trying to get a quick answer. So here is the anchor card. Uh, I have the book above, which means that there may be some underlying things that I need to be aware of. Um, it could also mean that in order to up my degree of success in getting a new job, that I might want to do a little bit of training. Uh, and so there may be some training that I can do that's going to up my chances to be able to get a job. We do see a repetitive um, sort of problem that's like cycle, a negative cycle regarding work in the past. Um, but but the sun is about to come up and shine and bring everything up, uh, which brings to a little luck and happiness uh, and something that you can actually trust and trust that this is going to be coming and or trust the job that's coming. Again, because it's the clover, we say, mm, it may not be um, similar. It may not be one of those like, oh my gosh, it's the bouquet card or something of that nature because uh, it's directly in the future. But there's a change of circumstances that is going to be helpful uh, that is coming. And the sun does bring all of that up higher. Um, we do again see that it's maybe a little bit of learning or training is going to bring about that change of transition uh, of the stork that brings positive shifts and changes uh, regarding finances. So where you might be able to get a job no matter what, you might actually be able to increase your finances uh, by a little bit of training or is there something that you can learn that might help to improve your job opportunity there um, that is going to, but you can also look at this as this change is going to again shift the resources um, and bring it to come to more of a um, well this is normally a card uh, it's a difficult card because you don't know where you stand for me the snake does lead to transformation but it's complicated it's not a straight shot here you are here's where you want to be you don't really know where you are so timing is going to be a little bit difficult here uh, because of the snake being here how long is that going to actually take to occur maybe not 100% sure, but we do see positive things coming. So just given this in a quick reading um, overall, it looks like the complications and the dis, dis, um, negative cycles are in the past. And so I would say, yes, things are coming. You might can improve those odds by doing a little bit digging, a little bit of research and or perhaps some training in the area that in your field of business. So again, quick, 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 quick. We're not trying to dive deep here. We're just trying to get a general feel with different systems. So that's Lenormand. So here I have the Star Tarot, and we're going to answer the same question with a tarot deck. Now both our candles are out. I'm not sure about the potential of this person's job. <laughs> so here we have some really powerful cards, right? We have three major arcana cards. We have the Hermit, we have the Magician and we have the Wheel of Fortune. When I do three tarot cards and I don't have any specific positions in mind, then the center card becomes a focus for me with the others as sort of supporting roles. And so having the main focus on the Magician says yes. Uh, all of these cards, the fortunes are going to change. It is going to take a little, you've learned from your past a little bit. Uh, you may have to um, you know, kind of step aside and kind of gather up your knowledge, almost like the book card. It makes me again wonder, do we need to, um, is there some training that might make this even better? Uh, but again, I'm not supposed to be comparing the two readings. Uh, but the wisdom is to take this time, right? Take the, the hermit card, take this time that you haven't had the job and, and use that to sort of take a breath or kind of gather your thoughts to bring some wisdom through your past experiences regarding work. Kind of pull all that stuff together as the hermit goes off and does that so that you can utilize that as you move forward. But change is coming here, right? But the magician says it's all in your hands, right? This also does tell me to say, to say to me, there may be some things that the person themselves could do uh, in order to maximize their potential for getting a job. Are they doing everything that they need to do? Are they going to 
to all the places that they need to go? Are they talking to all the people that they need to talk to? Are they taking any of the training that they might need to take? So on and so forth, because it's in their hands. Uh, this opportunity uh, and the potential of finding a job is in their hands, and they have what it takes to manifest that. And if we look into the future here, uh, we can certainly see that change is coming. And if right now they don't have a job and change is coming, and the real fortune actually does and it's you know pure state speak to positive change um, then I would say in a quick tarot reading that the chances are quite strong these are all three major arcana um, this one says you you got it within you this one says change is coming and this one says you know take this experience that you've had and use that take your past and how can you take that past experience and turn that into wisdom that's going to help you when you get the, to get this new job that you're looking for Bam. Again, try not to spend time. Just these are quick answers, right? Quick, quick, quick. This is, I'm sorry, that was the Star Tarot, if I didn't say. This is the Flowers of the Night. I just literally grabbed decks that were, you know, in quick reach just <laughs> to do these quick ones. And then I'm going to, again, do another question that's a little bit more in-depth with larger readings um, so that we can... Uh, compare the same question with a more in-depth reading. I probably truthfully wouldn't go to Oracle as much for like these quick readings, although sometimes I do, so I can't say that I wouldn't. Um, but I'm not going to dive deep. I'm just going to, what's the quick answer here? Here we have motivation readiness be ready and we have the interesting one of preserve now this isn't a deck i've used a lot so i may look up that preserve this one i really like it's like what what's your motivation you need to stay motivated uh you know again when i don't have anything i'm going to go to the middle here as the key thing be ready um this idea of readiness tells me that things are ready to change right you've got you've got that i that We've got that where we're about to flip over a new leaf. We're about to take care of things. Things are about to change. Um, you need to stay motivated. Your motivation has probably gotten you to this point. So I would say, yeah, okay, it looks like you've had a lot of motivation in finding a job. You're doing all the things that you need to do. So now it's just time just to be ready for things to change. Um, on, on a surface level, when I see this preserve, I think, okay, maybe this is a job that's actually going to last a while. It's going to be a job that you want to keep. But let me just real quickly look this one up. Mm, preserve. Be true to yourselves, particularly when seeking solutions or making plans. There will be a need to look after something, especially yourself, more carefully. So be so. This is like okay. Be careful and make sure that you you be ready. But be careful that maybe you don't just grab the next thing that comes if you have that opportunity. And of course, sometimes we just have to take a job, and we can't you know we can't dither about it. But if you have the ability to do so, be careful and make sure that you are making decisions uh, that are going to be overall good for you and not just a willy-nilly decision. Um, so that's, uh, so it's being true to yourself. Do what feels right. If a do job comes up and it doesn't feel right, uh, even though you feel like, okay, I, I need to take this, uh, maybe that's not the one. Or again, I'm never a proponent to say, if you don't have a job and you need a job, sometimes we have to take a job that isn't going to be a forever after job. Um, so I never promote proponent of that. But you may say to yourself, okay, if I have to have this job to feed and clothe myself and those I'm responsible for, I'm going to take it, but I'm going to know that this probably isn't where I'm going to stay. Or if you have the luxury of choice, then making sure that your decisions is one that is in your best interest. Bam. Okay. Again, trying to say quick answer, quick answer. So, you know, of course there's other systems and then just these, but um, I, that is Oracle, Tarot, Lenormand and Geomancy in a quick, oh, I just dropped my pen down into the abyss, <laughs> um, in sort of a quick answer to a, a question that is more yes and no. It's not really diving deep into something. So next, we're going to do the same thing 
but we're going to do so in more going more in depth into more introspective larger style reading with the same question uh, not the same question of work but a lot of people when they're digging deep are I get a question a lot and it's a question that I come to the table a lot you may be in a period in which you're feeling a little bit stuck you're feeling a little bit trapped the emotion isn't there uh, not emotion but the motion the movement you're just feeling stagnant and you need to get yourself out of it um, and you just kind of need to know what's going on surrounding what's the energy surrounding the situation how can I then use that information to start to get things rolling. So that's going to be the primary question. And I'm going to do a large tarot reading. I'll get some different decks. We can try different decks as well. Uh, I'll do the full geomantic um, reading as I would do a full reading, um, a full grand tableau reading. Uh, again, I'm not going to spend the same amount of time I would normally in a reading, but I do want, because these are all larger readings, but I just want to give you a, an idea of what answering the same questions in a more in-depth look looks like using different systems and and you know that might I don't know it might be interesting so we'll come back with some fresh decks and start with again with geomancy okay so I am going to got a different set of dice here so I'm trying to shake things up these are by color so red is for fire, yellow is for air, blue is for water, and green is for earth. These are probably my favorite, most used dice for geomancy. So I'm really focusing on what I need to know in order to move forward. So here we have a three, a five, a two and a five. We have a five, a five, a four, and a one. What's interesting right away, since I'm digging a little deeper, is in the house of the south we have Puer. Puer is kind of that teenage boy energy that's maybe a little all over the place. Um, not overly stable, but it's a lot of energy there, um, which is, is interesting to have come up when you're feeling a little bit blocked and you're feeling a little bit like, how do I get moving again, moving forward? So I quite find that interesting. Because of the energy is there, but getting it and using it productively is being blocked in some way. So here we have one for fire, two for air, uh, six for water, and four for earth. So we have three, we have four, we have three, and we have two. So we've done the daughters, and we can set those aside, or the mothers, I'm sorry. We have via all ones across for the first daughter, one, one, two, two for the second daughter, two, 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 one for the third daughter, and one, one, Two, two for the fourth daughter. Now we're going to combine them. One plus one is two. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. One plus two is two. So we have populous. One plus one is two. Two plus two plus two is four. Two plus one is three. Two plus two is four. One plus one is two. One plus one is two. And then two plus one and two plus one are both threes. We have single dot, single dot, double dot, single dot, and then we're going to keep combining. 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 2 is 4, 1 plus 2 is 1, 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 1. If you're watching this and having absolutely no idea what I'm doing, um, in geomancy, even numbers are a double dot, which is re represented by the straight line, and odd numbers are active single dots which are represented by a single dot here. 
2 plus 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, which is even, 2 plus 2 is 4, which is even. And then we combine the, the south, the first house, with the judge to get the effect of that ruling. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 1 plus 2 is 3. So we have done the basic chart here and I'm going to go ahead just before, just for the sake of getting things all on the paper before I, I start talking about things, I'm going to go ahead and transcribe it onto the house chart. But since I'm doing a full one, um, so I'm, I'm going to look at the current chart of things right now and I'm going to look because we're going to be comparing the first house. Uh, and I'm going to put the planets at the time of casting, which we have Mars in the first house. And then in the ninth house, uh, which is here, we don't have any planets. So I'm going to use that later on, but I wanted to go ahead and write that in again. Try Just kind of get everything on the paper uh, before... I get rambling. So in Geomancy, you don't cast something different for the house chart. You um, simply move it. So I'm just going to really quickly move things over. Oops. over. People mistake and they keep going this way, but you got to go back over to the ninth house. Geomancy goes from right to left. Okay, so now I've kind of transposed uh, that over um, so that we can address that in a little bit. Um, So yeah, so the other thing I'm going to do again, just for sake of, I, I normally would probably pause and talk about these. I'm trying, again, I'm not going to spend the amount of time that I would spend on each reading because it would just get to be a little bit too, too long even for me, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and follow the ways of points. Uh, I do follow more than just the fire line, so um, I follow the active dot. So here we have an active dot. We look, mm, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. And so this is the fire uh, way of points. We also have an active dot in air, uh, which goes to here, to here, and back to here. So this figure is the way of points for both air and fire. And what's an interesting here is that we have Fortuna Minor. Um, so this is kind of gets at the what's kind of underlying and kind of what's kind of underlying the situation that kind of works its way down to and having an impact on the judge. And this is the figure for swiftness. That's what the figure means is swiftness. Um, it is about success, but it's a little unstable. Um, it's a little bit inconsistent, but it also, and it may not last super long, but there is that sense of, of speed that's required or wanted or desired. And so we can see then for me, the, the way that I want to get things moving I want it to happen now. I want it to happen fast. Um, and so this, I'm kind of tired of where I'm at right this moment. Uh, the energy's there. I want this to happen. I want to get unstuck. But this underlying issue of speed over maybe a slower build might end up being a problem when I'm trying to get forward momentum. Um, sometimes we have to, you know, slow, slow, you know, slow and steady wins the race, that kind of energy there. And we have to pay attention. But I know now that this is underlying what the root uh, is kind of what's rooted behind uh, the answer that comes out here because if you'll notice what answer is the, the, the answer here in the judge is about swiftness right it is about things happening quickly but not consistently and in the long run it going down the impact the long uh, long term effect being that of sorrow um, or downward movement which is the exact opposite of what I'm trying so I I already know without going much further a big thing that I need to be reminded of that doing something fast trying to get fast forward motion 
and I want to, I'm here, I want to be there, and I want to do it now, that's not going to help me in the long term, in the long run, right? That isn't going to be something that is going to be useful in the long term. I don't do readings like this in order to predict what's going to happen. I'm doing this reading so that I can get advice on getting, moving forward. And the advice is the way that I'm starting and the way that I'm feeling about it and the way that I want it to happen immediately instead of methodically is going to bite me in the butt and I better rethink that. Which is interesting because we have then Mars in the first house with where um, that's two pretty strong um, energies here. And so that is going to, and then what the ninth house uh, which is the house of the question, um, is populous. It doesn't have its own energy. It's taking energy from around it, which is this unstable, combative energy that, that is not going to help me in the long run. So personally, I could, you know, I could stop here and, and not really go any further because I've I've already got the message, the deeper message that I want. But I'll I'll continue just quickly. Um, to finish it, uh, just to get an idea, uh, some more that's happening. Like, I'm not going to do the sum of the chart, which tells us how fast something's going to happen. I'm not really asking for a specific thing, so that doesn't really apply. But we can look at this part of spirit, which gives me sort of uh, indication um, about sort of my general... Um, disposition that might be impacting this particular chart. Uh, and so um, in this you count all of the active dots from the first 12 figures. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24. And you divide it by 12 um, and that is uh, 12 goes into 24 twice, but there's no remainders, right? Um, and so that ends up being zero. And so that indicates that it's in the 12th house. And again, that desire for things to happen immediately, that lack of patience, um, that being... And what's interesting is that when... Uh, you would then, if you're going to get the part of fortune, uh, I would take, subtract 12 away from that, which I can't do because it's the answer is um, there's nothing to take away from that. So it's going to be on both of them. It's going to be in the 12th house, which is prayer. So lots of, I want this to happen now, um, a little bit in high energy, but not stable energy. Uh, and so there's a, that, that's kind of a, uh, um, something that is really coming to light in this particular reading. Now, you can check to see whether or not something is going to uh, succeed, a kind of yes or no. This isn't a yes or no question, but I'll go ahead and do it to see if it's perfected or not. Um, they are not the same figure in each house. Um, this one um, does not move to the other side of this. Um, let's see, are they, this is the only time this shows up, so, uh, they don't show up somewhere else. Uh, is there a different figure that's the same figure next to both? Nope. So this actually is denied. And this is interesting because, um, that's probably as it should be, right? Because this, this, the energy that's being put into wanting to shift and change and get out of the rut isn't going to work. We can see that right here by the sentence. It's not going to be helpful. It isn't going to um, end in long-term change. And so this is a big message that says, take a step back. It's good that to want to get out of a rut. It's good to want to get, gain some momentum, but doing it in a haphazard, high energy, unstable manner and wanting it immediately is not going to achieve the end goal uh, that I'm looking for. So this is a message to take a step back, take a breath, and kind of re plan out more uh, methodically the steps that you're going to, that I need to take in order to gain to regain some forward momentum in a way that is going to be helpful and stick. Okay, so this is kind of a, a quick example of of a, a little bit going a little bit deeper into uh, a geomancy. And again, there's a lot more there, but for sake of getting a lot of um, things into one video. I just wanted to do that. I hope it's enough to show that you can go quite deep uh, with geomancy and, and, and go in on things that are not yes and no questions, and this is how you might do that.
So taking that same question, I think the next one I did last time was Lenormand. So I'm going to use a mini deck because I want to do a grand tableau and uh, a different deck. This is the one of my favorite decks, the 1889 uh, Lenormand. And so I am going to use that because it's mini and I won't have to take things off of my table to do this. So uh, I'm going to do the same question. And I know that there are people who think that you can't do this type of question with Lenormand, that it's all needs to be practical questions and spiritual questions like this. You know, it's just not really made for that. Um, you know, I would beg to differ. I've done a lot of these kinds of readings here. Um, so what I'll be focusing on, though, is the stork because I want positive movement forward. Because, again, I'm not going to do a full grand tableau um, in this particular reading uh, because... Um, it would take a while, but I, I'm going to focus in on the, the, the main messages in the reading as well as what's around myself and as well as what's around the stork for that positive shift and movement into another space, another headspace, another working space. So I already here have three, um, the first three cards, which gives us a message. Um, and we can see that mindful, and then that interesting, right? Mindful. For me, the clover card is less about little or big between the that and the bouquet card. And it's more about how you're finding that happiness and joy. Uh, the big bouquet is coming to you, or kind of somebody sending it to you. The, the clover card is about mindfully finding it, and you might miss it if you don't slow down and pay attention, right? So mindfulness and stability um, is is this is the this is the way to trust that things are going to get to the to the big sun card right trust the fact that if you mindfully are looking for happiness if you're doing it from an anchored way um, that that is the best way forward now obviously I you know I, it's very hard to ignore the information that I got from the geomancy cards uh, fig or reading but I think that's quite interesting that geomancy are saying don't just don't do it this way <laughs> and Lenormand is saying okay let's let's talk about how how it is how you should be doing it one two three four five six seven eight and nine okay so we got the first three cards in and now we kind of have to wait before I can get the corners for that other general message but I can already see that what's interesting is that um, I'm at the very top of the spread and this way. There's a lot of stuff in the background. Even though I want to move forward uh, and start to break the mold and get things going, the fact of the matter is there's a lot of stuff that uh, behind me that is impacting being able to move forward. So that's interesting, right? We also have underlying me is, is this idea of passion, which of course showed up in all the prayer, but it's pa passion in, um, that is modified by balance of the lily cards, right? That's going to reduce the chatter. And the for me, the bird cards is all about, are all about mental chatter. It's a little brain going, and it's me, crazy brain. But having, balancing the pa passion, Balancing the passion with the lilies of balance and harmony, that's what's going to kind of cut through some of this anxious energy that isn't going to be useful, as we saw in the Geomancy reading. What's interesting is that a difficult situation is going to harvest what? It's going to cut over here to the um, coffin card, and it's going to harvest perhaps the end of this stag stagnant period or this kind of mm, not liking where I'm at, which is a good thing, right? But it's not going to be easy. I'm not making it easy. And I know this is all whopper jawed because I didn't look up into the viewfinder, but that's okay. We're just kind of giving a good, quick, kind of quick thing. Um, the corners, we again have that mindfully looking for happiness is going to help to... Um, bring about see that the snake is about uncomfortable it's like a 
it's a situation that is complicated. You don't know where you stand. You have all the quills of the snake round, 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 and you're not sure if you here you are and you want to get here. You can't tell. Are you at the beginning of this? Are you in the middle of this? Are you at the end of this? And it's uncomfortable feeling because it's complicated as to where you are. It's going towards transformation, but you don't know where you're at, and people don't like that. We in general do not like to feel as if we don't know where we are in the path and, and how close we are to getting to where we want to go to, uh, which is interesting. Um, and it is that sense there that is putting an end to, to feeling secure, that, and it's not allowing that sense of feeling safe in your own home, feeling uh, good in the space that you're in, and this is sort of the key to that, um, which of course we can you know dig further into because this is in the house of the cross, and there's a lot that we can do um, I do here, but I'm trying to keep it moving, keep it moving, right? Straight down the middle, we do have the message that this is a journey. Take a step back and up with a tower and gain some perspective, right? Got to get a little perspective on this um, and make a, the, the wise decision, right? The wise choice. I think of the book of, a little bit about wisdom and knowledge. Like make the decision that you know is right, um, which would be to follow this mindful. Because you know, this is going to stand here is for me as sort of that key thing is to be mindful. Uh, approach the situation in a mindful way. Um, and then if I look over to where the stork card is here and kind of look at this one, we can see though that the uh, way forward, the uh, positive movement that the stork represents is in the house of the past. It's a decision. Are you going to decide to move forward? Okay, then make a decision to move forward, move forward mindfully. Uh, and it's also right follow, you know, right in front of the past card. I love that. And this line here of the tower the choice um the the choice making a knowledgeable choice is right in front of is is the future line for making moving forward in a positive way we also do have the garden card at the upper corner that I always look at, the idea of reconnecting, making connections, um, and not falling into patterns uh, with social interactions and connections that I often fall into, um, but keep some perspective as moving forward. Uh, under foundationally, we can see that there have been some difficulties, but a commitment to knowledge and gaining information and learning is going to kind of pull out of the shell and move us forward, so to speak. So, Again, lots that we can do here. There's a lot of paths we can find. We can look forward and see a message that says, oh, be careful. When you see a knighting, okay, be careful. There's a, a message coming to not allow the mice to get in there and sort of chew things away at what you're trying to accomplish. Lots of things that can be done with the Grand Tableau regarding this particular question. But you can see that this is another way, uh, a different way of approaching um, this particular question. And it's a legitimate way. Don't be afraid if you like to use Lenormand. Don't be afraid to use Lenormand for these types of questions that aren't, you know, kind of cut and dry, work-oriented, uh, concrete, uh, practical questions. Lenormand works very well for spiritual questions. It works very well for kind of dig deep psychological, you know, get into the psychology of things. Uh, it can work uh, very well, even though we do think of tarot, and even I think of tarot a little bit more, you know, this is going to say, do this, do this, do this. You know, it kind of gives practical advice. Um, but I still think it works extremely well for any question that you might want to ask yourself. Uh, I think you can use any of these systems and gain information that's helpful. For tarot, this is the Darkness of Light tarot. Um, of course, this is an excellent question to use uh, in a larger tarot spread to kind of dig into things a little bit deeper.
So for a large tarot reading, I'm going to pull a card for the center situation, right? Again, we've got the Knight of Wands. We have this kind of going off, active pursuit. Uh, the Knight of Wands is definitely going to be a little bit more just high energy and just kind of plowing into what needs to be done. Maybe given the geomancy, which I shouldn't be thinking about, but maybe that isn't uh, how it should be approached. Uh, in the past position, we have the Page of Wands. And in the future, I love this, because what's the future is the Four of Coins. Now, I know there are some people who look at the Four of Coins as a negative, greedy card. I don't see the Four of Coins in the same way. The f number four is about stability, and the coins are about groundedness and earthiness um, and, and on our resources, right? And so this is saying that right now I may be off, you know, wildly in pursuit of forward motion, but the way forward is to sort of be circumspect with my resources. This isn't a time to just be throwing myself out willy-nilly. It's just a time for, okay, let's keep some, you know, stay, stay, stay internal here, stay figuring things out in a methodical way and not be just throwing coins everywhere. This is a time to do so in a calm, rational, and grounded manner and, and go about methodically deciding how best to plot my way forward. So we can see the same. And again, I know it's because I've already seen the other readings, but it, it is interesting when you see those two compared to what, what we saw with the Geomancy reading. Then I pull a card for the position of fire, which seems to be an issue. And here again, we have the six of coins. Breathe, take a breath, figure out the best way to use your energetic resources. Put them in your transformation, fire, creativity is all there, but be mindful about how you are using that. How are you handing that out and making sure that you're doing so in a balanced way. Sometimes in the six of coins, you even see um, a, um, a balance uh, thing, a balance thing. <laughs> I'm totally blanking, um, uh, but you, you, know, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, this is what happens when I'm trying to, what I know is going to be long, and I'm trying to do so in a, in a mindfully, as quick as possible way. <laughs> in the mind, we have the ten of coins. Again, coins, coins, coins. Bring it down a notch. My problem is massively my brain. It doesn't shut down. So the ten of coins are like, shh by the fire you're going to get there but the way that you're successfully going to get there is not by rampaging all over the land take a breath in the brain calm thyself right and again methodical if we want this to be something a, a forward motion that is going to be lasting that is going to bear the fruit of the ten of pentacles then bring some order to the brain lady in the emotions, we have the star card, so there is hope. There is hope. You're going to get there. It'll be all right. You're going to find your way forward again. You've got the resources, internal resources, to navigate your way to where you want to go. Just slow it down a little bit and do so in a way that is going to help in the long run. And the position, <laughs> see, and in the position of Earth, where, you know, this is a practical, okay, what do I practically need to do about this? Take a chill. Step back. Take a breath for a minute. Reassess how you're going to move forward and then move forward not running all over the land. <laughs> um, above is the five of cups. The five is a shake-up number, right? It's a disruptive number. Um, and so some of that maybe disruptive emotional energy is what's causing this desire for it to be fixed immediately for that forward motion to come now and that's not going to help right that's clearly not what it is that we're looking for and i love that we have the knight of cups underneath the knight of wands as sort of underlying is the knight of cups is off for the greater good it's he's looking at the bigger picture he's the one that's most like the for me he's most like the holy um the knight's going after the Holy Grail and looking for something that is actually going to make a difference is actually going to help um, a lot of people. And so there is that. And so for me that in this particular question, that would be the bigger picture, right? And so it's like, okay, breathe a little bit. 
um, and and kind of go for the bigger picture, or look for the bigger picture. And again, the Knight of Cups might say something completely different in another question, but that's the first response that comes to my mind when I see that for this particular question. And again, there's all kinds of more, more ways in which we can dig into all of these cards. Um, but again, in terms of brevity, this question is beautiful for tarot. And there's so much that you can dig into. Um, you can just see uh, with these three pentacles, I see that pattern there. Um, I just think each card in each position is really beautiful and has something to say. And so there's there's certainly a message that can be gained. Uh, using tarot for this question is a no-brainer. I think most people probably would default to tarot for this question. Um, and it certainly is, is a way uh, to use a larger reading to really sink in and get some um, more depth about a particular question. Now... The funny thing is, is that for Oracle, I'm still going to do the same thing. Um, this is, I just grabbed a couple decks. Like I said, I wasn't really, this is a Sacred Earth Oracle. I haven't used this very much, but I do love it. What I've used of it has been really poignant for me. Um, I still would only pick three cards, which I know is strange, but because we're looking at larger, but I don't really ever do, I guess I'll do, I'll do a five. I'll do a do and a don't underneath, but I really don't use Oracle cards uh, in large spreads. It just isn't how I tend to work with Oracle. Now generally, I'm going to do it the way I normally do it. So I, when I split for three, this is how I split. So And then I'm just going to pull a do surface. <laughs> take a slide up here and take a breath. Surface out of the water and take a breath. And what's interesting is don't stretch. Like, this is not a time for stretching outward. All of those other cards had spoken of, of okay, grounded, grounded, grounded. Uh, you're going to stretch, but right now, take a little bit of a breath here. I really love the, the cards here because when I do a three-card spread without any positions, um, the, the middle card is the key card. That's what's important. And I think I said that earlier. Um... But here we have this idea of brilliance. It's so beautiful. The colors in this deck are, are brilliant and beautiful, right? But they have this idea of shining and this idea of that energy um, start, that desire to shine again. So usually when somebody's feeling stuck and when they can't sort of want to get some forward motion, they're coming out of a low period, right? Not low isn't always horribly bad, but just a lull. They're, they're coming from a place of have stepped back, maybe a little bit of hibernation. And so I love this card because you can see that, literally see the sun starting to rise and the brilliance is there and the light is there. And so you have that feeling like okay yeah and that's can be why you can try to just roll back into things so fast and want it to be you know back on track immediately right with that because you start you feel starting to feel that energy build up again but what do we have on either side we have the dependability card um and so you have just that word dependability that's that slow and steady and and goes to go forward in a way that is dependable and is going to get you where you're going and is in very much in touch with your core i love this card it's like wait a minute wait a minute it's like the four of swords Go inward in order to go forward. I love that, right? It's that message of, yes, there is energy there. Yes, it's building. This is going to happen. Hello, star card. You're going to find your way. You're going to navigate your way out of this slump. But go inward into your core. Take one foot in front of the other and steadily and dependably move forward. And this is a better way to break through um, a period of stagnancy than doing it in a really hectic, um, almost um, manic kind of energy way of, of doing it, even though that seems like, oh yeah, I'm going to go in full force, I'm going to be blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be 18 hours a day doing this, doing that, doing this, I'm going to have this schedule in place, I'm going to do this, I'm going to blah, blah. 
you know, seems like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going in with a bang. Well, yeah, but that burns out really fast. And so it's like, okay, go inward and be dependable and step your way forward one step at a time. I think that's really gorgeous. And I love uh, those cards there. And then in the Dew card, we have the surface, which again, for me, you know, I just thought of that, okay, come float up to the top and, and take a breath, right? Um, but again, this is talking about both, actually what's below the surface is more important. Um, that just to be able to, um, it's not just what's on the surface of the water, but there's depth beneath the water as well. So it's the same, for me, it's the same sort of thing. It's like there's a lot of depth. Come up and breathe and drop back down. Come up and breathe and drop down. I can see that with these people. His eyes closed or here. She, he's kind of sinking down into the water and she's kind of coming up. And it is that rhythm of surfacing that um, taking a breath and then coming down, coming up, calm, right? You don't float like this unless you're calm. If you're frantic, you are splashing about and you are not um, getting anywhere. And what's interesting is that in the guidebook for this, it talks about how stability is what allows creativity to flourish. <laughs> so if you want to be creative and get back in and energetic, the way to do that is not willy-nilly, but to be stable. And that's going to allow then creative creativity to bloom in a way that is going to actually take root um, unlike, and not just kind of dissipate quickly. So I think that's beautiful. What's interesting, again, I, you know, I love um, not negative um, positions, but positions of shadow, like um, what not to do. And it doesn't mean the position of what not to do doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It means that right now this isn't the place for it. You need to focus on this, focus on stabilizing so that creativity can grow, focus on that rhythm of, of going under and coming up and going under and coming up. Work on that rhythm and that, and that kind of energy first. It doesn't mean don't ever stretch. It means right now that's not the... Um, this is the sun kind of energy. She's standing in the sun. She's going forward. She is living full out, growing, fast moving um, energy, powerful sun energy with this stretch. And right and that's great. And we want that, right? We want to put our face to the sun. But right now it's going inward in order to go forward. And that will start to build up towards the stretching, but not, not for this very moment. Um, and again, again, you can, as you can see, you could continue on with this and have a really beautiful in-depth reading about this particular question. So I don't know, to be honest, if this, if this whole uh, endeavor with this particular video is helpful or not helpful. <laughs> um, but I did think it was a good idea to look at a same question. Uh, across several different types of, of styles of reading and see how you can, I think any question that you have, can you can utilize any type of reading, but there may be one that resonate with you on particular things. I will say that if I'm feeling particularly vulnerable, I do tend to go to Oracle cards because uh, maybe just because of the Oracle decks that I have, but they tend to be, they still tell me the same information, but it does seem to be in a way that is more supportive and more nurturing. It can be. Um, all of them are supportive and nurturing, but they just go about it in different ways. And I will say that if I'm feeling vulnerable, I do tend to, again, go to an Oracle deck or go to a tarot deck that um, has, you know, feels like it's like, okay, I, I can hear your voice right now. I, this is what I need to hear. So I think that some of what, why we choose particular decks or particular systems for questions can have to do with uh, our past relationship or the past ways in which we have used that deck that start to create um, or that system that starts to create in our a connection with it between ourselves and that system that flows easiest um, in that manner because we have used it over and over again um, in that way but they all work right there's not one I think that's that 
I would say, oh, well, don't go to that one for this question because it won't work. They all work because the messages are really in you. Or if you read, you know, that you're gain messages from spirit guides or divinity, it's all in spirit guides and the divinity. But for me, it's, it's in myself. I can connect to the collective unconscious. I can drop down into the web, um, which is how I read with or without any system. So the system just helps shortcuts and focuses those messages and it doesn't matter which one I use, I can get a message out of that that's going to be useful and helpful. Um, so I don't know that this really helped answer the question. because The question really wasn't for me. The point of this video was not to say, okay, see how these read differently so that you can choose one over the other. The point of this is, is that I think any system that you fall in love with and that you resonate with is going to be able to give you the answers that you need. So go with so go with what speaks to you. You know, I think that as in all things, when you're trying to decide, when you're sitting down with a question at hand, I think we usually know. I think we usually have this gut instinct that says, "Okay, I feel like pulling the oracle cards out today," or "I feel like it's a Lenormand day." I feel like we have that sense of intuitive understanding of where we want to go in that moment so I wouldn't stress too much about it um, but if you're interested in using some other system I think that remember that the answer is not in the system it's not in the oracle deck uh, it's not in the tarot cards it's not in the Lenormand cards it's not in the shaking of the dice and a geomancy and all or the runes or the oams or anything like that right um the answers and the questions the messages are coming from within ourselves or from spirit or however it is that you are gaining you know tapping into to gain your messages and so go with what c connects you uh, what shortcuts you there in that moment is always going to give you the answer that you need to hear. So I hope that this helps and it was of some interest and uh, I hope that you all have an absolutely wonderful day.